Yo, what's going on guys? Bobby here and today we are back with another video So we're gonna be starting a new series today how to turn a noob into a pro We're gonna have a test subject that is gonna be joining us throughout this series many of you guys may know him His name is sorry He might have trolled in your power league game or your favorite youtuber or streamers power league games But we are going to turn him from an absolute noob that he is into a a pro and following these tips you guys can also do the same so we're gonna give you guys 10 tips per video this is gonna be the first one so without further ado let's hop into the games and let's get going okay so going into this game here again it's gonna be replays so we're just gonna be talking over and giving you guys the 10 tips while there's just some gameplay going over so starting out at number one this is just gonna be the most obvious tip that every pro every good player can tell you and it is super important don't die what happens when you die? The first person that dies, it turns the game into a 3v2. Now, yes, people can 3v2, brawlers can 3v2, but when you have three brawlers shooting at two brawlers, it's a pretty likely outcome that the three brawlers are going to end up winning. Now, obviously, some players are just better than other players, so you guys can see myself and Jigsaw, who are two pretty good professional players, are probably going to be able to just beat random ladder players 3v2. But at the same time, avoiding death is the number one thing you want to do. Dying is just not worth it basically ever. Avoiding dying 100% is what you want to do. And this kind of leads into point number two. Now point number two is going to be pretty simple. Don't overextend to get one kill. So as you guys can see over there, Sorry kind of just went up as fast as he can and dashed and did all this different stuff to maybe get one kill worst case or sorry best case scenario is he gets one kill and then dies that does absolutely nothing for us he trades one for one it's basically useless it would have been the same as if, if he did nothing um and right there i die going for a goal it was risky yeah and sometimes there are cool plays that you can do and on ladder it's not really too big of a deal if you're just messing around but staying alive there obviously would have been way better because what happened is i died and it caused the chain reaction of jigsaw dying sorry dying and then it just brings them into our spawn so again, the biggest two points that I want to say is don't overextend to try and get one kill and don't die. Now again, don't dying sounds kind of weird not to die, but there are, you can avoid death. Going super aggro for no reason is just something you don't want to do and it's something you 100% want to avoid. Now also, something that goes hand in hand in this, the reason I'm doing this all in one game and I am playing Poco, which kind of makes it a little bit funny. Um, is heal up now this is all kind of targeted so far towards like not dying and staying alive and whatnot but staying up is really important if you're at low health right now as you guys can see i'm moving back i'm not continuously shooting i'm just moving back getting my hp back and i'm gonna go right back up just take a second it takes like four or five seconds to heal back up it's really not a big deal just take your time heal up hide in a bush for a few seconds and go right back up there's no reason to keep shooting if you're low so again, don't die, heal up, don't overextend for one kill. Let's move into the next game and get into some more points. So going into the next game, our next tip to become a pro is actually one that's really going to surprise you guys. And that auto-aim is actually your friend and you want to learn how to utilize it properly. Now a lot of the mainstream YouTubers, and I don't know, I don't watch much Brawl Stars YouTube outside of professional gameplay, so maybe it's changed as of late. But a lot of mainstream YouTubers say don't auto-aim or auto-aim is only good on a few amount of brawlers or on tanks or whatnot. That is not true. Auto-aim is good with every single brawler in the game, all 46. Every single brawler has an auto-aim sweet spot. So what this means is a position that you're in where no matter what happens, when you're in that position and the enemy's in another position, when you click auto-aim, it's going to hit. If you play Gene a lot like myself, I for example know wherever I am, and or sorry, wherever my auto aim pull is going to hit and whenever it's going to miss. So sometimes I do aim my pull, sometimes I manual aim, but there are positions that if I get close enough or if I get in the correct position, I know for a 100% certainty that my auto aim pull is going to hit. And that's what you guys want to be able to learn. If you guys play Max a lot or Colette a lot, learn how close you can be or how far you can be for your auto aim to have a 100% success rate. Now, again, it is different with different brawlers. For example, if you're facing a crow or a max, something a little bit more fast, it's going to change. But basically, all the brawlers have the same movement speed. And if you guys can learn that auto-aim sweet spot with those brawlers, it is going to help your gameplay out a ton. You're going to hit a lot more shots, do a lot more, and just know basically a lot more about your brawler, which is really important. Now, the next one, which is pretty simple, is know the meta where you're playing. So for example, on safe zone like we're playing, Brock is not a meta brawler, but Brock is really good on this map and a couple others. 
it's not like that for everything. Brock is, you know, obviously only good on this map or a couple others. It's not good everywhere. And it's like that with every brawler unless they're really overpowered. For example, Gene. Don't know why Sari went Gene, but he did. You don't want to be going a bad brawler on maps where it doesn't work. You can queue up and just based off of comps lose the game. So it's really important you know what's meta where. It's really easy to learn. Just watch YouTube videos every here and there. Maybe watch a stream or a pro stream here or there. Or if not, just learn what you're losing to. If you're losing to a Colette and Heist, maybe say, wow, we should use a Colette and Heist and apply that and use it in your next game. So again, let's go to the next game and let's keep giving you guys these tips. So now our next game, we have two points on this game. It's gonna be pretty simple, but this one's actually really important. You wanna pick brawlers that synergize. So for example, I don't know if any of you guys watch competitive gameplay, but if you guys watch high level competitive or any monthly finals, you guys are gonna see that Gene, Sandy, and Max are the most commonly used comps. Those three brawl are the most commonly used comps, sorry. Those three brawlers together synergize so well together. And they're not the only brawlers that synergize. They're not, it's not like only three brawlers together synergize. Every brawler synergizes well with another brawler, or every synergize or every brawler synergizes poorly with other brawlers. For example, Rico and Max work really nicely together. You can use the speed to kind of zoom around the map. Fast Rico is already a star power that makes Rico really strong. When Rico has that speed, it's just really, really OP, and it's something you want to use. But for example, Leon and Max, they don't have good synergy. There's no way a Max is going to help a Leon, and there's no way a Leon is going to help a Max. So there's really no point in playing those brawlers together. With Gene, Max, Sandy, for example, you guys can use the speed to get easier Gene pulls to help get Sandy super. Sandy hides the Gene, all that type of stuff. It's really crazy the synergy that you guys can have when playing, or how easy the game is when playing brawlers that synergize well together. I would highly recommend learning brawlers that synergize well together. And again, it's really easy by just watching videos, watching pro tournament, pro tournaments on stream or on YouTube. There are a lot of different ways to learn this. So I 100% would learn or try and learn. And even asking questions like in comment sections of like my YouTube videos or even like Kairos, Kairos Times YouTube videos, someone is bound to answer you and help you out. So ask questions, try and learn. It'll help you guys a ton. So again, let's hop into the next game and let's keep going. So for our final game, we're going to give you guys four really important points. So make sure you guys pay attention to these ones. The first one that we're going to give here is play brawlers that make sense. This one sounds pretty simple, right? You would think not. For example, Sari is on a level one bell. This does not make sense. Sari is not going to help us win this game. He's going to be useless throughout the entirety of this game. You want to pick a brawler that makes sense. Tick, Brock, Nani, Piper. These all make sense here. Maybe a max bell would make sense. But Sari has picked a brawler that has made absolutely no sense and it is not going to help us win the game. Now what goes hand in hand with that is know the meta. Know what brawlers are good, know what brawlers are weak. For example, Nani is good on this map, not really good anywhere else. Know the meta, know that it's strong here. Brock is not you know, necessarily the strongest brawler, so you don't want to run around with Brock on every single map. And Tick is not really the strongest thrower, so outside of this map, you don't really want to be using Tick too much. Just know what is strong, know the meta, because it's extremely, extremely important to know when a brawler is good and when a brawler is bad. Another one is don't waste your shots or super. This one is very important. I cannot stress this enough. Supers are what ties brawlers together. For example, with Nani, when I get my Nani super, it's essentially a free kill. I know that Tick has a head and you guys, or sorry, Tick has a shield and you guys are going to see this a little bit later in the game when I get my first Nani head or second or whatever it is. I am going to not go for the tick. Why? Because the tick is going to pop the shield and run away. You do not want to waste your supers because your supers are very valuable. So as you guys can see here, I'm going to pop my super. I'm going to slowly waddle my way up the map or whatever. I'm going to see the tick. He's going to use shield. I'm not going to go for it. You cannot waste it. It's basically a free kill. You cannot be wasting supers or shots because shots are what get you the kills and your super and supers again are also what get you kills. Now, there is one more point, and I have to go through my notes right here because I forgot what the last point is. But okay, I found it. It's to play brawlers to their strengths. I might have already said this, I don't know, maybe I didn't, but you don't want to play Nani on a close range map. You want to be playing it on Shooting Star. You don't want to be playing Piper on a close range map. You want to be playing it on Kaboom or Shooting Star or something like that. You do not want to play brawlers where they don't fit. Brawler selection is so important. Like for the points slash tips that I've given you guys ties in with brawler selection on maps. It is so crucially important. Half the game is just queuing up and queuing up on the correct thing. 
If you're not queued up on the right brawler, on the right map, on the right mode, you are bound to lose. So make sure you guys know a little bit. Don't just blindlessly queue up, but watching this video is a great first step. I assume most of you guys, since you're interested enough to watch this video, already know what's meta where, so you guys already have this down. So just try and apply some of the points that I gave you guys, because it is going to help a ton. These are 10 points, even if you use two or three of them, that is really going to up your gameplay. So try and remember some of the stuff that I told you guys. Use it, be smart with it, and try and adapt and learn in your game. And if it helps you guys at all, let me know. If this video helps even a tiny, tiny bit, I did my job and I will happily make a second one. So let me know if you guys enjoy. If you did, thumbs up, subscribe, all that type of stuff. I will be back for you guys tomorrow or the day after. Again, we're going for those consistent uploads. We're doing great so far. Hopefully we can keep going. But I'll see you guys then. Peace out. See you guys eventually. <laughs>